there guys, gals, and non-binary pals, GM Potter here. Welcome to my channel where I review books and bookish things. I try to upload on Thursdays and alternating Tuesdays. So as today, the day that this video is going up, it is Christmas Eve, I thought we would do one of my favorite holiday stories, which is The Hogfather uh, by Terry Pratchett. So let's get into it. Okay, so this book came out in 1996. It has a 4.25 on Goodreads. I would give it a solid five stars. It is a Discworld book, being that it's set in the Discworld universe. That's the Terry. That's the universe where most of Terry Pratchett's books take place. Uh, it's similar to ours, sort of. It's a divulging alternate history kind of feel for it. Um, very fantasy heavy. Um, the it's the world is a flat disc supported by four elephants on the back of a giant turtle that flies through through space that being said this book is utterly amazing i loved it i i've, I've read it many many times there is a, a bbc production of it that came out i i think i saw parts of it i think i think it came out while i was on christmas break one year from school so i was i was supposed to be practicing my tuba instead of watching TV and I of course watch TV instead. Like most Terry Pratchett books, this one is on its surface. It is a just fun romp. Uh, it's a fun holiday romp. The auditors of the universe, the mysterious robed figures that try to make sure that things go well and go correctly in the universe are trying to kill Father Christmas or in this universe the Hog Father. Uh, so death has to deliver presents, and that's what it is on its surface level. When you dig a little deeper and you really take the time to devour and analyze and dissect this book as you're, as you're consuming it, um, it's a commentary on poverty and social injustice. Um, he's death, right? And he's taken over the Hogfather's, uh, Hogfather's duties. Well, the Hogfather grants wishes. He grants Christmas wishes. And if he's real, then he can grant all the presents, right? Well, we meet the little match girl. I don't know if you're familiar with the story about the little match girl, but her wish is to not freeze to death. And he finds her and he gives her life and finds people to come in and get her warmed up and feed her and take care of her and all of these things. And that was her Christmas wish and he grants it. He's going to give the poor children just as nice a presence as the rich children. Because just because you're poor doesn't mean you want lower quality things. Doesn't mean you want lesser things necessarily. His assistant has to step in and, and tell him that, well, in reality it's the parents that buy the presents and their socioeconomic repercussions that come with this. That, yes, the, the presents come from the hog father. But because there's the pretense that the presents actually come from the parents, richer kids get nicer things, poorer kids get less nice things, if anything at all. And he remarks on the unfairness of that. There's class divides. Um, our main character in this is actually Death's granddaughter. And she is royal or noble and chooses to work as a governess. She's technically of a higher class than the people that she works for. and they're afraid to step up to her and treat her like they would a regular employee because of her status that there's also class divides among uh, among every character is marked and notated by class divides that so that's something that Terry Pratchett being british was very interested in and invested in the idea that you should be treating children like people that if you treat children like actual human beings and treat them like like beings instead of accessories or uh, lesser than, like that that idea is explored and what happens when you treat children like children and the fact that children are conniving just as much as as grown people and or they can be and that children are every bit as much a full person as an adult in the way the 
that our main character, the governess, interacts with the children she takes care of. She's like, hey, cut that out. It's not going to work on me. You're, you're trying to connive me. And it's like, oh, oops, right, forgot who I was talking to. This book also, to a very vast extent, explores belief systems in that the gods are being made real. If at some point the explanation for an event could be that a god did it. The, these mythical creatures, like the tooth fairy, like the the Veruca gnome, the, the, the warts on your feet, that's, those come from the Veruca gnome. And then we have the oh god of hangovers. All of these things. And yes, it's it's funny and it's, it's entertaining and it's lighthearted. But again, if you actually invest in the story and dig deeper... It makes some very interesting and excellent points, really. It also talks about morality. It's a lot. Like, this book gets, gets pretty heavy pretty early on. Some notable quotables from the book. Um, we have, uh, since Death is playing Hogfather, he goes to a local department store and play, dresses up as the Hogfather and plays Hogfather to people and gives them actual presents. And one of the little little children, a little girl, asks for a sword. And so he gives her a sword. And one, her parent says, you can't give her that. It's not safe. It's a sword. It's not meant to be safe. She's a child. It's educational. What if she cuts herself? That would be a very important lesson. Like that just towards the end of the book, we have this conversation between death and his granddaughter that she says, you're saying humans need fantasies to make life bearable? And to which Death responds, really? As if it were some kind of pink pill? No, humans need fantasy to be human, to be the place where falling angel meets rising ape. And she says, tooth fairies, hog fathers, little? Yes, as practice, you have to start out believing the little lies. So we can believe the big ones? Yes, justice, mercy, duty, that kind of thing. They're not the same at all. You think so? Take the universe and grind it down to the finest powder and sieve it through the finest sieve, and then show me one atom of justice, me one molecule of mercy. And yet, Death waved, his, waved a hand, and yet you act as if there is some ideal order in the world, as if there is some, some rightness in the universe by which it, it may be judged. And she, to which she says, yes, but people have, have, have got to believe that. Or what's the point? To which Death says, my point exactly. This book is so phenomenal. It's It does a good job in psyching you out and making you think that it's one thing. It's very much a look over here while I do something over there. Like it's look at this hand so I can pick your pocket with this hand, but instead of picking your pocket, I'm reverse pickpocketing your, your brain and making you think about things. A commentary on the world the way that all of Pratchett's are there isn't a single social topic that Terry Pratchett hasn't hasn't touched on hasn't elaborated on hasn't expanded on hasn't written about um, I can't remember which one of his books it is but there's essentially the he talks about the poverty tax in that there's a character who's poor and he needs to buy boots and he there's essentially there's two options there's the really expensive boots that cost a lot of money up front but they'll last you for years and years at a time and then there's the cheaper boots which don't cost a lot of money up front but they won't last anywhere near as long so you have to keep buying them um and that's that's something that i related to um when i read read that i think that's in in the second desk world book i might be wrong don't don't quote me on which book it comes from um but as a child, I was constantly told that, I, oh, yes, you're hard on shoes. You're, you're very hard on shoes. You go through shoes. Well, it wasn't so much that I was hard on shoes. It was that the shoes sucked. And it was the poverty tax creeping in on the edges. Like, you have the same thing, not just with shoes, but with clothes, with cars, with every quote-unquote consumable good that you're trading off money and value 
it's a privilege to be able to spend the money on something to be able to buy something that's going to last that's going to nourish you that's going to make you whole in the way that you need it to that's going to fill a gap rather than being a band-aid. There isn't a single topic like that that Terry Pratchett hasn't touched on. If you haven't read Terry Pratchett, I highly, highly recommend getting into Discworld, into, um, he wrote with Neil Gaiman. Good Omens is really, really good. It gets into more of the social justice and belief systems in the book, especially. The show touches on it in more of a tongue-in-cheek kind of way. The book as, as is al almost always the case, dives into it much, much deeper. I don't know, do you like books that trick you into thinking deep thoughts when you think you're going along for a, a frivolous ride? Um, what are your thoughts on, on the philosophies of Terry Pratchett, of his works on, on social justice and morality and all, all these things that make us human? Have you read The Hogfather? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about, about The Hogfather and about Terry Pratchett. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Have a great one. Bye.